So, um, yeah, Lendlease is a big Australian um, company. It's, it's a listed on the stock market and we've got about 8,000 employees. So, um, but we, you know, we are a good corporate citizen and for decades have worked with Aboriginal people. Um, but most recently, I just want to talk about the, the RAP program, Reconciliation Action Plans. So there's over 900 organisations that have RAPs now and RAPs are about respect and relationships and building relationships and then the opportunities that come out of it, whether it's economic participation and jobs. So in terms of partnerships that we're all talking about here, there's over 900 organisations, NGOs, big corporates, smaller businesses, government, state agencies, schools, who now have RAPs and are, we're all working together. So we're all working under the same framework um, on how we just address all these challenges and issues that have been a failure of frontline policy for, for, for decades. So um, the video I'm going to show you is about a partnership Lend Lease has done with Darkenjung, local land, Aboriginal Land Council on the Central Coast. Um, we have a large New South Wales government project for, to do a redevelopment of the Gosford Hospital and we actually went to the Land Council well before the tender went in and said, would you work with us and partner with us to actually develop, co-develop and co-design the Aboriginal participation plan for this project? So how are we going to do the respect relationships and opportunities piece? Um, and um, work on the co-design of that, give us a letter for tendering, went into the government and all the rest. Now that land council did that be based on what the work we'd been doing for about six years in Burke. So we've got Alastair Ferguson, who's one of the Burke community leaders here today, but, you know, Burke came to town and, and you guys know the challenges and the opportunities much better than I do, but they said we're sick of the stock in Burke, the housing stock is no good, it's built, you know, all those challenges. And they just came to, to town and talked to a whole bunch of corporates. Well, we were one who said, we'll come with you and we'll have a look what can be done. So out of that relationship in Burke, we've only ever... Got, had two houses built locally there and we didn't know whether we were doing social housing first or affordable housing or what the hell it was and it ended up two families bought them. So IBA uh, gave those families loans and they bought them. But we're still working with the Burke community on trying to develop that pipeline and, and, and I think we talk a bit later on this afternoon about pipeline and creating investment opportunities on one another panel. Um, but it was because of the relationship we had with Burke that Darkenjung said yes. So um, I'll, I'll, show you the, I'll show you the video and the Aboriginal Employment Strategy of the other organisation who work with us in partnership here. So our RAP has given us a principle that we only preferably work with Aboriginal owned and managed organisations in this. So to reflect some of the things the other speakers have said, business is open for partnerships and there are opportunities for at different levels and different sizes of businesses. Um, to, and land councils to come together with big corporates and government to do some of these projects. So we we'll, hope the technology guide, uh, guides are, are um, good to us. Let's see how we go. It's only a couple of minutes. Wouldn't be a conference without one of these uh, tech difficulties. So, so just from this, you might say that's a huge project. What's that got to do with the sector? Let's go from this big picture and then break it down to what the legacy is. I can talk about it. Sorry, they're just grabbing an idea. I just don't know why. Thank you. Slide Sometimes you just gotta. Thank you. 
So there are good stories out there, aren't there? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I just want to touch on that's a pocket of excellence. We have improved the stats. That's about a month old. So there's now a quarter of the, ab of the workforce is Aboriginal on that project um, and just about 100 of the, of the um, workforce is, is, is Aboriginal people. And Gosford, if you don't know where it is, it's, it's central coast, New South Wales, so over 40,000 people have to travel all the way to, to Sydney to work. So there's, there was generally unemployment and a lot of homelessness and issues there. And those guys at, at, that talk there um, are all locals. So they are very, A, proud to be working on a local job and, and contributing to the community. And you can see they're talking about even their family. 
um, being born in the hospital. Um, but, but you know, a big project like that is generally a short-term thing. You know, this is what happens in the parks. You have big projects, everybody gets trained, woohoo, maybe the project lasts long enough to do an apprenticeship. The big circus leaves town, down we go again, no jobs. The difference with this type of partnership is A, the success of the community supporting those workers and the businesses, so they're feeding those businesses to lend lease. So the success is the, the support of the community and the cultural support of the land council in, in those workers. Um, and you know, the, the bigger win, I think, is that the medium to long term, when that project's finished, we're already now working on where all those workers go. So you, some of them are going to go and work into the hospital itself. But Dark and Jung are also building up a whole construction crew ready to do, they're building their own developments next. So they'll feed some of those into their own businesses and, f and feed off that. But the other thing is, what's the potential for your housing providers, for your maintenance teams and crews or your construction crews to be picking up people like this from an area where there's been a big project? Now, the Aboriginal... And, and this happens because there's government policy and it is it is being starting to be better policed and monitored. We love... you know, My job is Aboriginal... Yeah, making the rap work. Um, so I love a big stick, you know, I can say, oh, the government makes you do it and, you, you know, it's compliance and this and that. But you can see the passion in that um, construction manager of ours. He's a local guy too. So even just having that number of workers on site is breaking down all those stereotypes and all that negativity and, you know, some of the conscious and unconscious racism um, that exists there as well too. But critical to that partnership was getting out well ahead working out can we work together, do we like the look of each other, you know, does this match if we've got shared visions and values, um, and, and learning each other's language, you know, learning a construction language, you know, learning the needs and the capabilities of each partner. So these are some of the successes. So it mightn't always be a, a, a lend-lease. We've also seen success in the Peninsula Business Alliance up at Cape York, um, who uh, we worked with early on, but they're working with second and third tier road contractors now to do sections of the Peninsula Development Road. So they're bringing in all the local Aboriginal businesses and workers and the, the local Aboriginal councils to come and get more of those contracts. So partnerships are here and we are open for business and we're happy to talk to people about these type of things. I mean, you've talked about partnership too, you're open. Um, I, I just wanted to show you that and, and talk about... Um, the importance of not outsourcing our relationships, because that would be done in the past too. Everybody would go and hire some third party white, you know, consultancy to go and do this type of work. There are pockets of excellence. The AES in there is an Aboriginal employment and training provider. They're there mentoring those staff. They've all been there for over six months. So um, putting that accountability and ownership in the hands of the community is, is really the success to that job. That could, that's not about Lynn Lease, that's about what the community has brought to that project. And as I said, like the APIC target, you know, in construction is 5%. We went into that job saying we'd, we'd target 8% and without trying too hard, they're at 25%. So what we want to do is do that everywhere. And... Um, you know, just, just an afterthought, I guess, because we, I don't want to take up all your time, but in, in thinking about that APIC policy, there, there are contractual requirements for, for builders to provide this type of thing. So if builders can't do it on a project like this, why can't we get some of that money and put it back into a potential funding source for some of the community housing projects that are out there? So I just want to leave you with that thought. I know we're... We're getting, I'm, not, I'm holding up for a cup of tea and a bit of cake. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to be like that. But um, I, I, th I think you can see that there's been trust, respect and shared values there. And that if we do come together, we can do amazing things. And we just need to keep rolling and not start reinventing stuff again. So thanks, I'll leave it at that.